And you're asking, like, what do we do about if you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you... more than 30 years i got my real estate license in the um, and your your origin story is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna use that kuka you know I, i'm a little more strict with what i'm i'm looking at uh hey everyone out there i uh, we are a little bit later sorry about that we had some technical difficulties that's all right so we are here today yesterday was a holiday it was memorial day i celebrated with my family so hopefully you guys did too and so at least got you a break for me anyways so um with you know with that being said we have uh wendy barber who is a great uh, you know, great investor in the metro, in the Detroit and Metro Detroit area, mainly in Detroit in the pro Detroit proper. Uh, so we're gonna hear from her about uh, how she's investing, what she's doing, and then we have an event coming up this Saturday that she's gonna talk about, and we're gonna go through that as well. But you know, we want to get to the good stuff first, which is. Uh, you know, how she's investing, what she's doing, uh, you know, doing the flips, things like that. Uh, so let's, let's, you know, with all due to, you know, ah, sorry, with, with all of that, you said, let's bring on Wendy. Wendy, how you doing today? I'm doing okay. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. So hopefully you had a great Memorial day. I did. I did. That's awesome. So. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that you did. And we are, uh, so just to let you know, we're streaming live to YouTube as well as our Facebook channel, De Metro Detroit off market real estate group. Okay. okay. So we have about 4,100 members in that group. So if they're not watching live, they're watching on the replay. So, okay. uh, which will be good. Now, for anybody out there who has questions, by all means, put them in the chat. We'll be able to see them, put them on the screen, and we'll be able to answer them as well. So um, put your, uh, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're in the Facebook group, put your questions in the chat as we go. So, um, you know, with that being said today, uh, Wendy, you know, let's do a quick introduction of yourself and... Um, I know we have a lot in the description, um, but tell me a little bit about yourself and then we'll get to how you got started. Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Wendy Roberts Barber. I'm a mother, a wife, and I have two young men. Um, I have a 12 year old and a 34 year old. And so how I got started into real estate, I originally I, st I um, started a, a um, cleaning service and I did that probably for about, I'll say about four years, four or five years. And that was going, going really great. I had some of the fitness USAs and then I had some other residential and it was kind of very challenging at the time to try to find and keep proper help. So then I was doing residential and I had 40 homes that I was doing by myself and it kind of got overwhelming. And then I branched out to the commercial. And then after um, some of the Finish USA's kind of closed down, I kind of branched out and I was investing into real estate. I started off was going to do a, um, a home for a um, daycare center, but then I was getting calls for adults. So um, I kind of housed and provided a service for people that was special needs. So that was kind of like my niche has kind of been my niche for the last 15 plus years. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. So, so you, you really had a, 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 a long career with, you know what, sometimes it was jotting around real estate and not directly into real estate, but in business and things like that. And then you ended up getting into it. So tell me a little bit about how you got into um, real estate. I know you just went over a little bit of it. So okay. tell me a little bit more in depth, like 
Um, did you did you think you could get in real estate going in? Well, yes, because I have always, probably since I was about 12 or 13, I have always dreamed about um, owning real estate. And one of my dreams is to eventually own an apartment building someday. And okay. so um, I started working at a mortgage company and I was a head processor. Um, it was like two different mortgage companies. And then I purchased my first property. My very first property though was in Flint, Michigan. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I, I purchased that and that was, you know, a distance. I had a great tenant at the time. So that was basically a buy and hold. And yeah. then I started branching off and um, investing here in Detroit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what made you start doing Flint? Was it just because that's the deal that showed up at that time? Absolutely. So there was a deal and the, uh, my manager um, over the office, it was a deal that came through. So I decided to purchase a property, which it was a great um, mm -hmm. deal at the time. And so um, actually we still have that property. Um, we got to go up there and do some work for it, but um, it's kind of sitting right now. But um, that was my very first property. And then I purchased another property where I, I uh, moved into and I had that property and I kind of got caught up in the mix where they had, I had like seven, seven to nine people on my title. And so that was oh, my wow. very first property uh, with Rimco and MCA Mortgage. If you've been uh -huh. around, they were like really big back then. They were uh, really investing in Highland Park. Okay. And then they had some, you know, a lot of properties here, from my understanding, in um, the Brightmore area as well. Mm. Okay. So, yes. Okay. So, um, you know, so you purchased your, your personal property and you, you that was in Detroit, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And mm -hmm. then did you moved out of that and turned it into a rental? Or did well, you no, so it? I ended up selling it to um, a friend and they still have their property to this day. And okay. so um, I sold and I moved on. I bought some other properties here in the city. And then okay. I also got cut up in the mortgage crisis, which was 2003 or five. I got caught up in that. And then so I kind of lost most of my properties because they was underwater. Was that the 2008 one? Yes. Okay. Yes. 2008 mortgage crisis. Okay. Yes. And, and how many properties did you have during that time? I had I um, eight. That. I had eight properties. Oh wow! That's and then four of my properties with with one lender. I had buyers for all of my properties, but they didn't want. They was like the uh, the value was too low. But yeah. I was offering each of my properties at least about a hundred a um, hundred k. And someone like my primary property, they end up selling it for thirty thousand dollars. I was sick. Wow. Yes. Wow. I, I filed BK around that time. Okay. Trying to savage my credit. I was paying close to $10,000 a month trying to maintain my credit and save my properties back then. Yeah. And for anybody who doesn't know, BK is bankruptcy. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, it's a hard subject. And I, I got to say that sometimes people need a fresh start and that's why they have that. Okay. And, you know, I hate to say it, but I did it myself. You know, I was the same way in, in 2016. Okay. It was just, I felt it was, uh, it was underwater. And I basically, it felt like I was working for the banks. I was working for the credit cards. I was working for everybody. And I barely had enough to pay to even get groceries. So, um, so yeah, I ended up, uh, I ended up doing that as well. Uh, declaring bankruptcy. Um, and it, it, it's a reset and it gets you, you're, you're, you start thinking about things a lot better. Absolutely. So, yeah. You're like, okay, I don't ever want to go through that. <laughs> Absolutely. It was very, a very stressful time, like my primary house. And then I end up purchasing another house, trying to get that house before my credit got bad. So it, it was really, it was a really bad, um, time of my life you know yeah um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah and i don't rec i don't recommend it to anybody but it, it's like it is a last resort by all yes. means it's a last resort so um and you know it was it, it's definitely so i feel for you on that because i've been through that <laughs> you know <laughs> i really do 
Um, now with that, when did you start flipping houses? So I haven't did a flip yet, oh, okay. um, which that is on the horizon that's coming up. Um, I've been looking okay. at different places, but my strategy for the last several years has been buy and hold. And so okay. again, I provide services to people with special needs. And so okay. some of the homes that I have is for them, for my seniors and stuff, people with mental health or mental Got wellness it. issues. So I like to provide a service with them in a, a nice home for them. So that's right. my strategy at the present time. And then I also kind of then branched off into short term rentals, like the Airbnb. Okay. Yes. Yep. Now, does that, uh, does that, do you get paid a premium for doing that, for doing the special needs? And I mean, is it guaranteed money like a section eight or, you know, is it subsidized or anything like that? Do you go through an agency to, to be able to get all that? Or like, how does that work? It's not subsidized. However, um, most they pay through their income and then if they're in a licensed facility then you their income you get an extra certain amount um through social security and because it was like a, like a third party mm -hmm. um they kind of have downsides throughout the last i want to say like 10 years so like before okay. like in the early 70s if you had a client you could get it sometimes an extra two to three hundred dollars per day but now they they have gradually decreased the amount. So okay. you basically kind of um, whatever the, the person could pay and what you're charging. But the best mm -hmm. way kind of to do it is to kind of have a guardian for the more sake. And then they'll make sure that you get paid. Got it. Yes. OK. Yeah, because I have heard of the say um, with, with the substance abuse housing they they usually have that those where those are going through an agency yes to place that and yes. that's all guaranteed money through the agency itself so um you know there's also i didn't know if you it was the same same type of thing with uh special needs so. it is but it, the money is not there like it was i mean it's only a couple of populations so yes and then if you're a okay. non-profit though that could be very helpful because you can get other um, grants and stuff that could help you, you know, to run your home. Yeah. Okay, that that's awesome. So, yes. um, you know, obviously you're not a nonprofit, right? I am now. Oh, you are, you are now. Okay. I am. Okay. So, um, but for what advice do you have for, say, other landlords that are out there? Do you like the Detroit market? Are you looking outside of Detroit like others are? Um, what is it about Detroit that you'd like so much? Well, I guess I kind of have like a, um, it's kind of a comfort zone for me. However, my very first home for the license was in Southfield. And I had a really okay. nice um, home on Two Mile and Southfield Road, but it was, um, I was renting the home. Um, but I definitely would like to somewhere down the line, possibly get another home um, mm -hmm. in the suburbs or something like that. Yep. Okay. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of my buyers, they want to deal with suburbs, not proper Detroit. Right. And I, unfortunately, like I understand their dilemma with that, but you know, as long as I tell them, as long as you got the processes in place absolutely, for the property, the, uh, a good property management for the area of Detroit that you're looking into, like you're you're leaving a lot of um say money on the table there's a, it's it's a, a lot of uh the higher percentage of roi is in detroit so it, it is that. we got a lot of hidden jewels here and so yeah. i love detroit um born and raised so i'm continuing to invest in detroit and as i said it's um like i said we leave a lot of money on the table but it's also you know my saying it's money in the hood and you know Yep. Off the town, we overlooking that, you know? Right. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. 